What's up, everybody? Let me just get myself situated in the group here so I can see all your comments nice and clean. As you are coming in, if you wouldn't mind doing a little AV check for me, let me know that you can hear me and see me okay. That would be great, very helpful. Just make sure that we are, I can see the video. <clears throat> All right, there we are. Cool. Pin it. Let's go. All right. What's up, friends? I hope you're doing well out there. I would love to, uh, again, get a little AV check if you don't mind. Yeah, okay, I see some of you guys messaging me. Thank you about that. And uh, welcome in. If you are um, brand, brand new to the old Souls and Seekers community, uh, you are somebody who uh, registered for this group. Um, hopefully the reason you're here is because there is something in your life or just life as a general experience that you want to enhance in some way by either transforming um, your mindset, potentially transforming um, something in your relationships, your business, your finances, your interpersonal health, and like all of this, right, stymies from our mindset and our, our inner world. And so if you're if you're new here, uh, usually it's uh, two of us on these trainings, myself and my brother, Elon, who co-founded this company um, 11 years ago. Wow, I have a, a high school friend of mine, my best friend from high school calling me right now, um, co-founded um, co founded this company 11 years ago. And we have been doing our own interpersonal transformational work for 20 years or a combined 40 years we have been uh, coaching in some facet for the last 18 years. So a combined 36 years of uh, coaching experience. Um, we have coached everything from leaders and entrepreneurs, executives to people who are uh, literally living out of their cars and kind of, you know, everything in between stay at home moms and stuff like that. And we have a, a deep passion for sharing this work with people and the things in our lives that we have done uh, and tried so many different things and and what we do here as an organization is we we borrow from a lot of these concepts and generate from our own experience uh different ideas philosophies and practices that you can take out into the world every single day which are going to make monumental changes in how you feel about your experience of being alive how you feel about your relationships um, and then ultimately how success and results in your life show up because it's all interrelated Right. So if you are brand, brand new, uh, the first thing I recommend, and it's going to interplay with what we talk about here today, because today's topic is um, basically like three things that you can do to to shift or, or get back control of your mindset. You know, we've lived uh, we're living through extraordinary times. But suffice it to say that many of the challenges that many of us are dealing with on, on a daily basis, be it uh, interpersonal uh, in our relationships, in our marriages, with our significant others, call it what you will, um, you know, they, they bring up challenges. And so a lot of our circumstances in our life, a lot of our relationships are hitting parts inside of our systems that are setting in motion particular patterns that um, yield less than desirable results or put us into a, a state of anger or sadness or flux or stress or anxiety. And this you know, can create a less than high quality of experience in terms of how it is that we go through the world. So uh, Elon today is with his uh, son at the Miami Open. They're both uh, tennis obsessed. So that's why he's not here. Um, and the first thing I would just recommend is if you're brand new to our community, uh, we kind of changed it. So now when you guys sign up, you do have access to uh, our 28 meditation day challenge. And this is going to be the first thing that we talk about today as far as reclaiming your mindset, which is really have, starting to develop 
this inner technology, this inner engineering that you can do through uh, meditation. Okay. And so if you don't have that for any reason, you can go to soulsandseekers.com forward slash freedom. Uh, or let me throw this up on the screen if I can find it. There we go. You can scan that little bitty right there with your phone if you're watching this on desktop. And it's going to take you uh, right over to that page and you can register there. And I, and I do highly recommend doing that. Now, if you're one of these people that has tried meditation before and it's just not your bag, I totally get it. Because the first thing that most people think about when they think about quieting their minds, they uh, about meditation, they think about quieting their minds, right? And we want to let you know that quieting your mind is a, is a very, very challenging thing to do. And I don't know if you noticed this, and you can tell me in the chat box how that's going for you. But when you sit and you try to quiet your mind, it oftentimes feels like a wrestling match and the mind generally wins that match, right? So it's like the more you try to quiet the mind, it seems like the more agitated the mind gets. And this can reveal to you a, a specific truth about life itself, which is, you know, the more you stand in opposition of anything, the more it seems to persist, right? What you resist persists. So if you resist the way that the mind is working, it, it's not like that resistance helps quiet it down. So these meditations are not about quieting your mind down. Okay. These meditations are about an active practice that you can do to start retraining how you locate your awareness. Okay. And that's a, a really important little line there that a lot of you guys might miss how you locate your awareness. And we're going to talk about why your awareness is in a specific location when that happens, how that elicits a certain type of conditioning. And by relocating your awareness, what kind of biological and healing effects that can have on the body. And so for us, we want to help you relocate your awareness. We want to we basically want to show you how you can move it somewhere else and that there's a actual response, a physiological, a mental response. It allows for a certain healing, healing modality to occur in the body. And our meditations are going to train you how to do that. They're going to train you on these different qualities of awareness that we can easily go into. And as a byproduct of that, when you begin to heal yourself, when you do this inner engineering, when you uh, clear um, energy from the body, it's the byproduct of that is a quieter, more focused mind. Okay, but if you go into meditation, trying to quiet the mind, and trying to focus the mind, kind of like you know, wrangling it into doing that, you're going to see the mind does the exact opposite. It gets it gets more and more jacked up. Okay, so please take advantage of that meditation. If you haven't already done so, we get incredible feedback on it all the time. There's, I don't know, like 1500 people registered for it at this time. So you can see the comments, you can see people here in the Facebook group talking about it. So uh, it's probably the, the best tool that we can give you guys. It's totally free. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's worth your investment of time. And we would say do it for those 28 days, you know, or as best as you can during those 28 days, build that habit and then stop doing it. Take yourself off of it. And so that you can feel the difference between what it's like to be in a daily meditation practice like this one versus not doing one because human beings like to learn through relativity and you'll immediately see a difference in the quality of how you show up every day, how you feel about yourself, um, how it is you walk through the world with the ease of not burdening yourself with all the circumstances that most people uh, lay on their shoulders to create difficulties in their life. Okay. So that's a little uh, intro here. Uh, we're excited you're here, especially if you're if you're brand new and um, please take advantage of all the resources that we have for you. They're pretty incredible. Having said that, let's talk about our mind. Let's talk about mindset, you know, like a uh, we, we do both here in this community. We speak about the foundations of mindset, and it's really to uh, release you from some of the trappings that the mind can create. Uh, as we all know, the, uh, the mind is a, uh, a pretty amazing chess master. Uh, so whoever just wrote, can you have the link for meditation again? Yeah, it's uh, soulsandseekers.com forward slash uh, freedom. You can go to that. Let me actually just type it in there for you real quick. Or if somebody can do that for me, that'd be great. So soulsandseekers.com forward slash meditation. And so, you know, 
what what's happening with the mind and i think the first thing that we want to acknowledge about the mind and what's kind of philosophically changed quite a bit but i don't think that most people have quite caught up that there's been a a, a vast change in even how science looks at what's happening in the mind how neurologists are looking at what's going on in the mind how psychologists are slowly changing their tune about it is that the mind has been seen um as a kind of separate entity right like it's not somehow disconnected from the rest of this system and so you know going back maybe 10 20 years there are certain books that started pointing that the mind is really a mind body connection and today i would say that the mind is uh it's it's everything it's the entire system as a whole thinking acting intuiting feeling um and whoever put that link in there um about meditation that's actually not the right link it's forward slash freedom for the meditation okay so just a correction there <clears throat> um, and again if you need it later on just let me know i just don't want to stop the flow here to do that so the first thing we want to do is we want to recognize that the mind is your nervous system okay it really is this quote mind body connection and it has to do with the connection of your heart and it has to do a lot with the connection of your belly. And for anybody who knows anything about, uh, you know, science today when it comes to health and longevity, the first thing when somebody comes to me and they say, hey, I'm struggling with this, that and the other, I'm immediately curious about their gut health as the primary focus, because, yeah, you can work on the energetics, you can work on your mindset. However, if you are somebody who is uh, really sleep deprived. If you are somebody who's dealing with a lot of stomach pain, IBS, if you have leaky gut, uh, if this is shifting how your hormones are operating and balancing in your body, there's only so much you can do with someone's mindset when their physiology is causing them a lot of pain, when their physiology is, um, you know, not eating well, not tuned up well, then it's also going to really hamper our ability to transform uh, someone's life. And, and it can really go both ways. Sometimes by people working on their mindset and doing energetic practices, naturally what arises for them is treating their body temple in a much healthier way. When the mind's not healthy, it tends to be that it treats the body not well. Also, we're much more likely to drink, much more likely to smoke, much more likely to feel stress and anxiety. And so we have seen certainly clients who were not focused on their physiology at all. And then they come to work with us and suddenly like health becomes a real primary focus. It's not something we even talk to them about, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's just something that kind of naturally arises as a byproduct. Some of you guys have found your way to transformative and personal development work because you were on a health journey with your body. And while you became more attuned with the body, suddenly you start realizing, well, my mind is doing all sorts of crazy stuff. I should probably help that out as well. Right. So it, it kind of doesn't matter which way you go. I mean, we've, we've worked with plenty of people in the, in the health space as well. Um, and again, like we want to recognize that the mind is connected to all this. And one of the things that, that we've learned over these uh, last many years is there are is all sorts of science uh, these days about what we call character styles. OK, and these are really like energetic patterns created in the body. And it turns out that there are approximately depending on, on which schools you look at five to seven character styles. OK, five, I should say five to seven character styles. Um, I like to lean into seven character styles because we have uh, seven points of energy inside the, body, uh, inside the body that we call chakra systems. And what we have learned is that every single one of these chakra systems, every one of these uh, energy portals, if you want to think of it that way, are have a completely different quality of awarenesses inside the body. Like if you were to you know, place your awareness on, inside your heart, you're going to start noticing a qualitative shift in your experience. So why don't we just try that here for a moment? You're going to notice that you're listening to me from your mind, okay, like from up here. And if you pay attention to the mind, the mind has this, um, this density to it. It feels very sharp, like a, a, a laser pointer or kind of like a, a high alert animal that's kind of looking around all the time. And it is assessing for danger. Right. Because the mind is is been tasked with a lot, especially as we become more accustomed to becoming a mind culture. Right. This world is very much a world of the mind, especially in the Western part of the world, in the more indigenous 
South American, um, a Southern, you know, uh, Southern Hemisphere, Southern uh, South America type cultures, where some of these older ways are still very much the way they do things. You come there and you can feel this is a place of the heart. This this earth, this ground is a place of the heart. That's why so much of the plant medicine work uh, comes from from these indigenous uh, Southern American, South American cultures, right? And so if you can like focus just on noticing the qualities of your mind, you'll feel this density, okay? And most of us may have not ever even taken time to think about what is the quality of my mind because we're in there all the time. So we don't even recognize that there may be other qualities of the mind that we can easily and get to, okay? So just take a moment here to like take a deep breath and just drop your awareness somehow, some way, as much as you can away from the mind and towards the heart. And see if you can notice that as you come towards the heart, there is a qualitative shift in the energetics, okay? And it might feel like a softening. It might even feel like relief, like, ugh, okay, because we're all in our to-do lists. We're all in our day, right? And so bring, bring in the awareness down to the heart just to see what we notice. And you harvest from what you notice what you notice. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what I'm noticing. What are you noticing, right? So I notice less density. I, I feel a spaciousness. It's almost like the air is getting cleaner around me. There's suddenly a different pacing to life. I feel lifted in gratitude when I'm in my heart. And I, it feels like I want to take my time to connect more with myself and with you, whoever's listening. Versus when I'm up here, which is a lot of like information talking at, here's what I got for you today. And it's just a, it's a qualitative shift. Okay. Now go even lower in the system. So like drop now from the heart to the, to the lower belly. So like right below the belly button there. Mm -hmm. And again, just see, see what you can notice as you drop your awareness into your belly. And so I'll just name it <clears throat> for you guys, you know, so again, we're just to contrast a little bit. The heart space is the only chakra system that has both the masculine and femin feminine properties. Okay. And it's, it's interesting. So we call this the, the fire center. This is the, the heart, just like it is in the physiology. The heart is creating movement in the body, right? Uh, it takes an oxygen, it pumps the blood to the rest of the body, and it pumps it to the top and to the bottom. And so when we, we, when we look at character styles and chakra systems, the top third is what we call your masculine qualities. The bottom third are the feminine qualities. Okay. So this is like the doer. This is the receiver down here. Many people are very, very good at the doer. Very, very bad at the receiver. And they struggle in life because they're, they're having challenges in receiving. And so we want to be able to develop our awareness to not just live up here in this localized conditioning of our mind. We want to be able to bring it down. So again, the heart, is this, this fiery, dynamic energy. And when we come here, it's like if you're lacking inspiration, if you are looking for an answer and you can't seem to find it, oftentimes it's because the swirl of energy in your system is not doing very much. And so like if you want content to be there, if you want to find inspiration, you want to come and sit at the heart space. Okay, and there's suddenly you're going to feel like energy moving, this dynamic energy we call this dynamism okay and someone said what if i can't feel my heart i would say then what you're experiencing is probably a defense around your heart we'll talk about that today in pretty great detail so stick with me um and uh just because something feels numb is not an absence of the sensation numbness is the sensation that you're feeling so when you when you have people who we look at and in, in public and we say the, this person is sociopathic they don't feel very much uh, I would push back on that a little bit. My experience has been is that every child is born extremely sensitive, very highly attuned, sensitive beings. That's just uh, human beings' natural state. 
if a human is no longer feeling or having access or having trouble accessing feeling or sensation in the body, this points to trauma that they experienced and what their what the identity or ego that we're seeing on the outside um, is simply just uh, the amount of defense or defensive type of identities this person has had to create to basically protect a very uh, soft one, a very sensitive one inside. So even the least sensitive person on the planet underneath all that highly sensitive. Um, whoever is asking about the symbology, that's just the the, lo the logo of our company. Elon and I have a lot to do with um, infinity signs and, and double eights in our readings together. And so the two signs you're seeing there are basically like double eights intertwined, which also looks like an infinity symbol. So coming down to the belly, this is a much more feminine uh, energy center in the body. And when I say feminine and masculine, I don't mean woman and man, because every single person on, on planet Earth has both. Has both has masculine and feminine qualities. And generally speaking, a woman can be much more dominated by her masculine qualities, and a man can be much more dominated by his feminine qualities and vice versa, right? And so we all have all these qualities, right? Even the whatever, when we look at character styles, and we say, hey, you're like this, or you're like that, Technically speaking, we're all all those ways. It's just that over time, some of us, all of us, I should say, uh, it's like a dominant hand. Like you have your right and your left hand, like, you know, almost everybody has one, but you're going to have one that you use more. It doesn't mean you don't have a left hand, but you tend to use your right hand more, right? So the same thing with character styles. And so whatever served you in defending yourself, whatever served you in protecting yourself in moments of great stress when you were a young child, even if it was just energetic, even if you when you were just a baby, there are certain strategies and patterns that your body begins to develop. So as we drop into the belly, you guys might notice contrast from the heart even is that here there's a, a, a kind of like a much more, com you might start feeling much more compassion in your experience. So just let's lean into that a little bit more as a community. So finding the lower belly. <clears throat> You can close your eyes if it's helpful. And see if you can notice that the body tends to soften here. It can feel warm as if you're in a bathtub. So there could be like even a, a little bit of what feels like the body starts to float or just kind of like gently rock. So just see if you can notice the subtle change in your awareness as you do that. And it's not a coincidence that this chakra center, right, the sacral, is exactly where a woman holds a child when when they're going through their pregnancy, right? This is that energy. So small demo here, right? That we're, we're doing here and we're just experimenting. We're playing, seeing what you notice because if you want to become a mindful, aware person, uh, it's most people think of that as having an understanding of some concept. Oh, I've become more mindful. I understand this concept now. You know, all this like woke culture type of stuff, like all oh, these people who are moral police and stuff like that, like that, uh, has little to nothing to do with mindfulness or awareness at all. Uh, truly, like it, it's useful to understand psychology, but understanding psychology is no more going to stop a pattern from occurring in your life when you get agitated or anxious uh, than like chewing bubble gum to try to solve an arithmetic problem, right? Like when you get pulled into an experience, what that says is that a part of you inside got hit. And that part only knows this one view of reality. And so it starts to act to try to create safety in the system from that point of view of reality. So when people seem like they're angry or um, can go into like anxious states really quickly, these are all just strategies that that person is subconsciously used to basically defend themselves from that. And so with the guys of like taking control of your mind, I want you to recognize that while we teach and we think it's vitally important to understand how the mind is working. How is the mind creating distinctions? How is the mind 
viewing reality, generating reality, generating stories about the perceptions that it's having. Because for a lot of us, for many of us, we don't even recognize that the brain is doing this. We actually think that what we're seeing in front of us, what we think is going on, is exactly what's going on. And it takes about five minutes of demonstrations to show somebody that their mind has no fucking idea what's going on. Like it's so far detached from reality. It is literally living and viewing and filtering reality from its patterns. And that's not what's happening right now, but that's the perception that that person's going to have. It feels extremely real. And suffice it to say, what normally happens for us is when we develop a certain type of mindset, a certain type of view of reality, we spend most of our lives looking for evidence for that reality, every bad thing that happens to us, every relationship that doesn't work out, every business that fails, right? Like it all, it's all like, oh, see, there's that thing again. That's how it just is, right? And then somebody says, hey, sweetheart, that's that's not actually what's going on. And you're like, oh yeah, like, let me show you my, you know, uh, Britannica encyclopedia of stuff that I have here about that. And so like, it's it's a highly illusionary state. And that's kind of the trick with the subconscious. It both creates a situation and then also it, and then also explains itself out of the situation. Like it couldn't possibly be me. It couldn't possibly be my stuff. It's always, it's happening to me. And so a big shift that we really want to look at, and if you notice what we did right now, is I didn't say, hey, what's your problem? Let's look at it and assess it. I said, hey, let's turn around and let's look at your body. Let's look at what's what's happening inside of here, okay? And for whoever asked, you know, I, about whether it's religious or spirituality, you know, I, I, I am sure there are certain religions or spirituality that, that teach these things. I, I cannot assume to separate anything that humans do from spirituality. We are spiritual entities, henceforth. Everything we do is spiritual in nature. Um, you know, your spirituality, to me, that all that means is you are someone that's dedicated to their freedom and liberation as a human being. And at the more meta scale, you are, you are uh, dedicated to humanity being liberated and free. You want to call that religion, you want to call that spirituality, that's that's uh, your right of way to do that, okay? So the first thing is, is we want to understand that our conditioning, this the challenges that you guys are facing in life are literally sourced from the conditioning of your mind. And so when when we point and when we ask people, where are you? Like, where do you perceive the world from, right? Almost everybody's going to point up here. It seems as if the world is coming into our experience, somehow being translated into this like, you know, visual uh, landscape and our mind is then translating that. And I can tell you what's super interesting about this when you start studying how people, um, you know, develop these strategies and patterns inside of themselves is that you ultimately learn that the mind begins to shape the body. Because what happens is when we experience trauma, what psychology would call trauma, uh, at the at the level of energetics, we would say that trauma is basically stuck energy inside the body. OK, and you can feel right like when you're upset, like there's like a, 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 a bound energy, perhaps in your solar plexus or a squeezing in the back of your heart or your stomach feels like it's being like mashed or, or punched or something like that. And for a lot of us, we start getting when we get really scared or overwhelmed. There is actually a disassociation that begins happening. And even as I describe this, you might be able to touch some of this. It almost feels like your awareness is getting pushed out of your head. This kind of like fogginess begins. You lose your clarity. You lose your ability to think well. If you've ever been in like in a rage or really scared for yourself, like you could see like the awareness literally pops out. And if you ever notice this, when you see like a, a National Geographic show, and the lion or, you know, whatever, a tiger is chasing its prey. And the moment the prey gives up and quits, and you look at the prey, you'll see that the prey is not actually there anymore. You almost see like this like checked out look. It's because the consciousness is literally disassociating from the body. That's what it looks like to me anyway. That's how I explain it. Now, humans do the same thing, right? We are animals just the same way, not separate from the animal kingdom in any way. And so one of the strategies that our system has is when in moments of great strife and fear or grief, we like disassociate from our experience. And if you've ever been in that state, it's like it could be a little bit alarming. Weirdly enough, going into disassociation is one of the ways that we can actually access a lot of healing because that means you've come out of your mind. Right. And the mind. Ultimately, 
it is what is re-engaging and rehabituating and recreating these old patterns and strategies that to the mind aren't painful at all. That's just the way we survive, right? That's what the mind is looking at. Did we survive? Is my biology okay? Are we still breathing? Cool. Let's keep creating situations like that, right? Like one of the safest places that people can be is like sitting on their couch, eating a bag of potato chips to the mind. That's totally cool. But, you know, in terms of quality of life, in terms of health, like obviously not that great yet people, we have this massive obesity problem and people treating their bodies and, and, you know, these, these ways, not, not really anybody's fault. It's just now a methodology that people use to deal with the stresses of, of modern life. Right. So the first thing we want to learn, and this is what the meditations are for, is how do I come out of this conditioning? How do I begin a practice where I do repetition after repetition after repetition after repetition to come out of the conditioning of my mind so that I can experience what is happening, not from the mind itself. However, we want to begin to experience our life from awareness. Okay. And a lot of people have these collapsed. They think like I am, I see through my, my mind. And so I'm aware, but this is a very low level of awareness. And this has nothing to do with connecting to just the all, which is the, the pervasive awareness energy and consciousness that exists in everything. Yes, even in the walls around you. Yes, even in the computer. If something is made from material matter, it is by definition conscious and has energy. Uh, and it has connected to this awareness. And so what the beautiful part about learning, A, how to locate this awareness, how to come out of the conditioned mind, and B, how to sit in this awareness for longer and longer periods of time, is this allows us, instead of experiencing our trauma from within, Right. Like if any of you guys have gone to therapy or have done any mindset development work where they try to regress you back to a certain memory and then they have you look at it, you have to you have to note that what's looking at that pain that's occurring inside the body as that memory arises again is the conditioning of the mind. OK, and this is the same mind, by the way, that has that program inside of it. And so it's like the program is looking at the program. And so by looking at it and bringing that sensation back into the body in, in a unfortunately, somewhat unmeaningful way is we're re-experiencing the trauma and actually looping it in again and in a weird way, bounding ourselves up more in that trauma, okay? And we all do this, right? You know, like if you get in arguments with your spouse regularly, like that response that you have or that they have or that, you know, dance that you get into is in a way re-traumatizing you again. And it's the same trauma you probably experienced with your caretakers or mom and dad when you were a little boy or little girl. And what's really happening in that moment is both parties are trying to get a certain need met in their system. There was some unmet need during your development as a child. And what the system does is it tries to meet that need over and over and over again. And this is not to hurt you. It's literally to heal you. And so from even a quantum physics perspective, they have noticed that situations in life for people repeat over and over and over again, like, you know, uh, like variations of the same thing repeat over and over again. And they have determined that this is one of the ways that our reality, our system from the quantum realm literally tries to like clean itself, cleanse itself, bring itself back to homogeny and neutrality and like just take care of itself. So the reason if that keeps happening in your life, but it, it doesn't stop and it doesn't, you know, like you don't see the patterns changing is because you are watching it from your conditioned mind. And the mind is going, see, that's happening again, trauma. See, that's happening in trauma. So when we come out here, we go from being the subject, experiencing the pain or the trauma again, to this objective witness, okay? And when we come out here and we begin to experience this objective reality, we can feel the sensations in our body. We can see the thoughts that our mind is having. We can notice that there is not the whole of us. Instead, there's a part of us that is having this experience. And what that part is looking for is to get its needs met. So if we could, in that environment, meet the need of that part, what ends up happening is this part that has felt all alone, right? Because that's what happens during trauma. It's like a part gets hit. Something has to help you survive that moment. And when that energy is stuck in the body, the part, it's almost like what was once whole divides. And now the part feels like it's all by itself. 
And so when the danger comes again, or the perception of that danger comes again, the part's like, I got it, I'll handle it. And it takes over the system and hijacks you. And that's why when you're feeling angry or anxious, oftentimes it feels like, and you come down from that experience and you come back into your, you know, normal state, let's call it that, or what you're used to, you'll often say like, whoa, where did I go? It actually feels like a hijacking. And that's exactly what's happening. These parts are hijacking the system and they're using their perception and view and strategies and patterns that they've used their whole life to try to solve that problem, to try to create safety for the system. And it doesn't work. And so the need continues to go unmet. And then the part continues to fight and fight and fight. And worst of all, that part begins to create subconsciously more situations for it to feel like its purpose is being fulfilled. Okay. And this is what happens to a lot of us. We actually subconsciously put ourselves in situations, in relationships, in self-sabotage, in lack of worth and inability to receive, right? Not because we want to, because that's how the system projects its reality out into the world. It literally has to create the situation so that it's usefulness, right? It wants to be useful. It wants to feel useful. And so if we want to come down from all that, again, we want to meet the needs. And so you're probably wondering to yourself, <clears throat> like, how do we meet the need of that part? And that's really kind of like the, the secret sauce in all this is the first thing, again, with, with taking control back of your mind is you got you to gotta learn how to come out of the, uh, and consistently do repetitions to come out. Okay. The second thing we want to do is we want to meet the needs of the, the part. And, and said another way, to meet the needs means to create more safety and well-being inside of the system. I'm going to ask this question and you may have to sit with it to really get an answer for yourself. Well, my view after coaching tens of thousands of people is that your average person, and I've yet to meet one, and I'm certainly not one of them either, is that people, generally speaking, don't feel safe. Okay. And I don't mean like when you walk outside, you think you're safe. I mean, there's a, a felt sense inside the body, this feeling of safety that doesn't exist. And I would even push it further to say that a lot of what we see in the world as far as violence or what we see politically motivated or even interpersonal stuff you see in your family where people are, uh, are struggling in their relationships, what that person is saying that's fighting or you know whatever their pattern might be is, we could just say like, I'm not feeling safe right now. And what they're trying to do is to reestablish connection and feel safe. And so a lot of violence in the world comes from people who are not feeling safe, basically. So you check out for yourself, like, because safety is not a thought. Safety is not an idea. Okay, no more than love is a thought or an idea. We can talk about it, but talking about it is not love. And so safety and well-being is not a thought. It's not an idea. It's not an insight. You don't go, oh, I wasn't safe. Now I'm safe. It doesn't work that way. It is a felt sense. It literally is a felt developed sense inside the body. It's just the same way love is. And so the first thing you want to do is you want to actually be able to locate and feel the sensation of well-being and safety. Once you do that, for most people, they quickly realize, holy shit, I haven't felt that my entire life. I didn't even know I was looking for that. And again, human beings learn from relativity. So if you are stuck in a certain pattern, in a certain strategy, in a certain energetic uh, composition, in a certain configuration in your system, subconsciously, consciously, and you've been doing that for 30, 40, 50 years, how would you even know that there was another way to be? Right? How would you know? So when you begin to experience a safety and well-being, suddenly you go, oh my God, the contrast is huge from how I've experienced living my life. This is so interesting. And then just that little felt sense of that, even just a glimpse of it, even a moment of it, is enough to make you realize, oh shit, I wanna develop more of that, okay? So let's talk about how we do that, okay? And by the way, guys, if you are interested in these conversations, you wanna know how to train yourself to do this, okay? And if you train yourself to do it, again, I can guarantee you the byproduct is you're gonna feel more safety, more well-being better relationships, uh, easier to produce results in pretty much every fundamental aspect of your life. Because right now, everything in your life is dictated by your strategies and your parts, and they're all subconscious, right? The way we get to the subconscious is by realizing this is not a mental effort. Like, how do I reach down into my subconscious? But it's actually in beginning to feel and get very intimate with the sensations of our body in a very subtle way. 
It's a very subtle awareness. But when you develop this subtle awareness, you suddenly realize my whole life is sensations in my body. And so if I want to dictate and create and manifest the life that I really want, but I'm in scarcity and fear all the time, then the energy inside my body is scarcity and fear. And that is what I'm emanating and projecting out into the world. And so this reality, this organic hologram is mirroring this frequency output from my body of scarcity and fear. And so it creates more circumstances to be afraid and worried about. Like we all know that, you know, person that worries about everything. That person is looking for more stuff to be worried about. They are looking at the news. They are looking at the world and their relationships and going, see, more stuff to worry about. It's literally, they are literally generating that reality. What happens to any individual that starts living a life for, and the foundation of who they are is well-being, safety, authentic connection, love, compassion, ease, support. And that is what you're walking around with in your system every day. Do you believe then that the organic hologram of this reality would start projecting back to you more things to feel safe about, more things to feel well about, more support, right? All that, that stuff that we're all looking for. And that is ultimately what happens for people as they begin to master this perception, this, this feeling inside of their body, okay? And so if you wanna learn more about that, you can just head up to soulsandseekers.com above my head and forward slash, forward slash, every time this happens, forward slash, messenger <laughs> and uh talk to our team and they will give you a video explaining how all our process and programs work you guys can have a conversation about if it's a good fit and then we'll uh we'll help you get enrolled and show you what we got because i promise you you do this even for a, a few weeks and it is gonna completely alter the landscape of your life okay and we we guarantee your results here we have done this with so many people as long as you show up and do this work this work works on everybody because what we're talking about is not a process. We're talking about absolute universal truths in a way that our awareness and biology functions and how we can begin to quote unquote hack that. It's not really hacking. It's just work with the system instead of working against the system. Okay. So if you are somebody that wants to get that information, click that link forward slash forward slash. I can't get it. Messenger <laughs> and get the information and then have a conversation with our team and see if it's a good fit for you. Okay. And so the way that we repair this is the same way that you would have repaired it when you were a little boy or a little girl. Okay. Let me say more about that. When you were a little boy or a little girl and you were upset and anxious, and again, just feel into that. You're three, you're four. Don't think about it. Feel into it. You're three or four. Something has happened. A rupture has occurred. The child that is now living in a distorted reality. And it could be like they took that toy away from you. Or your sibling hit you. Or you're feeling afraid and mom and dad are not around. Okay? You're experiencing a tremendous amount of fear and anxiety in your body. Rightfully so. Biologically sound, right? You're supposed to. You're supposed to get a signal. Uh-oh, something is not okay here. Okay? What did you want as a child? What was the experience you wanted in that moment? And why don't you guys tell me in the chat box, what did you want as a child? What did you want to feel? What did you want to experience in those moments? We want to experience replay. <laughs> what did you want to experience, guys? To feel safe, someone said. Yeah, Jane said, comfort, consolation, exactly. Hey, Elizabeth, good to see you. For someone to just listen. Yeah, and that's that's a great answer. Love, safety and comfort, safety and love, safety. Yeah, so let's, let's take all of that and would it be fair to just summarize and say you want it to feel safe again, right? Michael's answer is, is true to an extent, but I don't think a, a, a child at three years old knows that they need to be comforted through conversation. Like if I have a four-year-old at home and I try to explain to him why he should feel safe, while he wants to get a connection from his mom or something like that, he doesn't care. It doesn't make a difference for him. He wants to feel safe in that moment. And in that moment, he doesn't feel safe. This happened last night. I was putting my, my son to bed. My wife was at a, a, at a meeting for, for one of the um, schools that we're part of and uh, one of these energetic healing schools that we're part of. I stayed home because I wasn't feeling so great. And I put him to sleep. And right as we went to bed, he really wanted his mom. 
And this went on for like 40 minutes. Like he's really distraught. You know, he's really, really sad. He just wants to see his mother before he goes to bed. You think I could explain that away to him? Oh, it's okay. Mommy's not here. She'll be home later. Doesn't give a shit. Not his priority. Right? He, there's something in he's looking for an energetic signal from mom. Sometimes I can provide that. Sometimes I can't. Okay? Like, because he's looking for something. Now, what I've learned over the years is I grew up in a familial system. You probably did too. Where when I was acting out or feeling sad, we may have talked about my experience, which, but it was kind of logical and wasn't really deeply felt. And my parents didn't quite know how to hold that experience. And so there may have been experience of like shutting me down or dominating me, right? Especially if I'm like being yelling or upset about something. Hey, stop that, right? Don't cry. It's okay. Don't cry. Even if it was done with great, great intentions, like it's okay. You don't have to cry. This, the child is getting a signal from the parents, both energetically and verbally, that the way they are right now is not okay. They have to be some other way. And so over time, what happens to the child is the child begins to conform because the child is worried to lose connection with the caregiver or the parent. And in order and, and that to the child is a direct threat to their survival, right? Like love and that experience of connection and attunement is a signal to the child that everything's okay and they're going to survive. But if that's missing, this anxiety starts building in the system. This insecurity starts building in the system. And this is what we call attachment system. Every child, every animal has an attachment system. It's actually healthy for us to be very attached to our parents and get healthy feedback over and over again that we're safe. This is how we develop a healthy and safe nervous system over a period of time. And for almost exclusively everyone in the world, this was not their upbringing. This was not their experience. And so gradually, as you become an adult, you start feeling this anxiety in your system, but now you can analyze it. A child would never analyze their anxiety, right? That kind of happens later. I think it may be in our teen years. And that's why teenage years are so funny because your, your logic brain has now been on for about four or five years. And you can think back about your childhood and how things felt. And now you begin to judge and assess how things felt versus directly experiencing them. And if the feedback you got, again, didn't develop a healthy nervous system, then that's the pattern now. It just runs rampant inside of our system. And so again, I'm using, I, want, I like using the analogy of a child because technically that's what we all are. We're all children. You might have a bigger body now, but nothing's changed. Your nervous system still operates the same way. Your mind operates the same way. You know, there's no, there's no point in time where someone comes to tap you on the shoulder and says, you're an adult now. That's something that we, we self-define, we self-declare. And all we really have across the entire planet is a bunch of sensitive children at different ages and different sizes. Okay, the system works the same. So if the child wanted connection and safety, what do you think it is that your system wants now? When it's feeling distraught, when you're, when you're stuck in you know, states of high anxiety or stress, what is it that you're looking for? You want that same comfort that you would have gotten from mom and dad. You want to feel that safety. You want to feel held. You want to feel connection. Okay, so that should be a huge aha, hopefully clue to everybody here, is we want to recreate the same environment that the child that was supposed to get the attunement and the energetic signaling from mom and dad that they are safe, they are well, and we want to get that same signaling now as an adult. And so what we want to understand about ourselves is that we are mammals and mammals and all animals. The first language we have is energetic signaling. And so the way that we can get that need met that that subconscious has been looking for and looping, looping, looping those circumstances over and over again is by creating an environment where you actually, where the system finally gets the signal that it is safe. It goes through the experience that it needs to go through just like a child would, right? Because just because the child feels safe, when, the ch when we feel safe, that's when the release can happen. The reason people feel unemotional uh, numb, nervous, is they never feel safe enough to let it all go. They're in such a high strung state of being held like this. And, and it's, it's like literally as if the threat is constantly occurring. So we want to create that environment. And then the body goes, oh, thank God. Ugh. And what happens is, is the way that it came in, meaning like the way the signal came in is the way the signal comes out. So if you like had an experience and you were like really distraught and cried a lot, Chances are when it's ready to come out, you're going to feel distraught and you're going to cry a lot. 
And the only way that I have seen healing happen or people truly transform their lives is not by figuring out how to stop a process or go around it or navigate in any way. You got to actually go through it again. And so somebody's asking, how do we get that signaling? Well, this is why we develop our programs the way that we do. Okay. Cause there are certain things that you can, you can understand and help yourself through awareness. There are certain practices you can do within yourself to significantly shift how you feel when you are stressed out and then come back to a more neutral state, a, a high, manif high manifestation, high energy state. And then there are certain things you literally cannot do on your own. Like Elon and I do not believe that human beings are capable of healing themselves on their own. It just doesn't work that way because our trauma didn't happen in isolation. Our trauma happened with other people present or other groups present. And so we are interpersonal beings that are having our inner experience, also having our relationships and our relationship to group. And so there is work to be done interpersonally. There is work to be done relationally. And then there's work to be done at, at level of group. Okay. And so what happens is when you have like people in our community who've been doing this work now for years, they have been retraining their nervous systems to feel safe. Okay. And so when they walk into a room, they have certain signals that are emitted from their system to other systems that make other systems feel more safe as well. Okay. This should also give you a, uh, an idea of how global transformation would happen because the more safe nervous systems we have signaling to the rest of the, the hive, so to speak, that it's safe, it actually makes it easier for other people's systems to feel safe as well. And it's the, it's the opposite, right? When somebody's distraught or angry or that, it's like it's very, it can add a lot of dysfunction, dysregulation to the space. When we regulate our nervous systems and we bring safety and well-being to it, what we do is we can sit with other nervous systems who have this regulation, who have this safety. Elon and I have been working on this for you know seven years now, very intensely. What happens is when you sit and you do what we call a co-regulation practice, you actually begin to regulate or co-regulate, you know, you know, cooperatively regulating the nervous system. And the person who is in that kind of anxious, dysregulated state can actually find regulation, safety and well-being through connection with another. And there are practices that we teach in our programs on how to do this and something we recommend doing regularly, because if you want to retrain your nervous system, it is going to require a lot of repetitions on your part. This is not, again, not something that you're like, oh, my nervous system is dysregulated. Regulate my nervous system. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. And somebody's saying, do you mean like vagal nerve exercises? I, I would imagine science would agree with what I'm saying. Uh, in terms of yes, the the way that the vagal nerve works, but I'm I'm really talking about a more holistic view instead of getting too um, wrapped up in exactly what systems are being affected here. I'm talking about full on nervous system repair, attachment system repair, relational repair. Um, it it is just the reality is is you are going to experience life in a completely different way from a foundation of feeling safe inside of your nervous system. Most of us are walking out around in a highly anxious fight or flight type of state. You wouldn't even know that until you come down and regulate your nervous system and get a parasympathetic nervous system response, rest and digest. And what, and I always say it's ironic that science calls it rest and digest. So it's like, what are you digesting when you're resting from an energetic perspective? What we're digesting, what we're metabolizing is energy, is the bound up and stuck energy. And so that's why I was pointing earlier. I said, hey, when you're feeling afraid, you could feel that tension. Boom. Right. You could feel that squeezing. Boom. That should indicate to you that there is a response, even at the subtle level, inside your nervous system and its energetics and is bounding up energy. OK, when the energy is bound, the mind is going to get into action. It's going to react to what's happening. OK. And if you've been on these calls, I've, I've often made the metaphor of like, if you eat food and you're supposed to metabolize that for energy, but the food gets stuck, we call that constipation, right? There's tension, right? In the lower tract. There's, and, and, and trust me, if you're feeling that tension, which is a pretty obvious tension, the mind is going to have something to say about that and it's going to react to it. And so that is an obvious thing. Or when you have a headache, oh, ouch, right? And you're reacting to it and you're living from that state. But you have to imagine that this is happening. At, this, at subtle levels inside of your body constantly, all the time, moment by moment, second by second, right now, right now, right now, there's all sorts of this stuff happening there. 
all sorts of points of tension, all sorts of stuff that your mind is reacting to. And this is why people find themselves in these loops. This is why people struggle with their mindset so much. And this is why they can't repair it by just doing strictly personal development mindset work. Because the source of why the mind is feeling agitated in the first place is ironically not in the mind. The mind is perceiving what's happening in the system and reacting to it. So if you want the mind to be less reactive, more focused, you know, all that kind of stuff that a lot of us are looking for, you know, less reserved and thinking that the threat is coming, we want to work with what's in the body and we want to help the body actually metabolize this energy. When we do that, the mind just naturally becomes more placid, more plastic, um, less reactive and more responsive. Okay. And that's really what this work is all about. Like that's what transformation is. So the way that we approach it is we explain to you what the mind is doing through very uh, interesting distinctions and experiments. And then it's just clear. It's like, okay, this is how the mind tricks me. This is how the mind puts me into these loops. Right. And, and to degree, even if that's all you did with us, your life would be radically different than most people's lives. You're going to be able to conquer fears that you've never conquered before. You're going to understand how to repair things in your relationships. Um, and that's where what we focus on in our level one work is we think it's critically important to have this foundation of what we call growing up work. Okay. This is how we actually grow up. We take, we learn how to take responsibility, how to add integrity into our lives, how to empower ourselves from both a linguistic and mindset place. And the beautiful part is we just re-recorded level one and we, we started, uh, intertwining it with this energetic work that I'm talking to you guys about. So even in that level, you're starting to understand, oh, this is what happens if I want to have like full transformation, full repair, completely liberate myself. Here are those practices. Okay. At level two and level three, which is what we're training that Elon and I do is the more advanced work that I'm highlighting here. It's how we can repair what's happening in the nervous system. It's the attachment system, the vagal nerve, the parasympathetic, like all this kind of stuff. It's a lot of fancy science talk. I don't even give a shit about all that. I just care that if you do this practice, you're going to feel completely different about your life. It's going to give you a, a way to be with what is happening in your life in a way that most people have no idea is even possible. And the beautiful part about locating this level of awareness is, A, you can go into higher states of consciousness like that. Okay. People think like higher states of consciousness, like we're all going to have a psychedelic trip. Sometimes that does happen, even in meditations, but that's not what I'm talking about. It's really giving you access to being with the circumstances in your life, not from your patterns. Okay, like you want new results, you got to get the hell out of your patterns because they're just going to keep creating the same thing over and over again. And so that's why I'm highlighting when we can sit with others and the signaling that we're getting back and forth is safety, well-being, safety, well-being, safety, well-being, worthiness support like over and over and over and over and over again that becomes the foundation that becomes the new perception that becomes an elevated state of living you stop surviving and you just start participating in evolving and that's what this work really is about it's giving you that confidence that it's not necessarily about having to change your circumstances to make you feel better the reason you want to change your circumstances is because something doesn't feel safe inside okay and again, the reality is reflecting that lack of safety. If I generate safety as an experience within my body, the outside experience just naturally transforms itself. It becomes a byproduct of my inner awareness. And then I don't have to work so hard all the time on generating outcomes and achieving and doing all these things. It just flows kind of like a well from the foundation of safety, well-being, and goodness and support within you. And then those kind of things just arise in your life as a byproduct. It's a much, much less energy intensive process. It doesn't require a lot of upper management and a lot of mental. It's really just this wonderful feeling of sitting inside of your awareness and just being. And you will not be able to figure out how to just be by thinking more, reading more, watching more videos, not even our videos. These are direct experiences that you must have if you want to transform your life. We have tried it every which other way. It does not work. You can try it if you wish. Our intention here is to have you skip over <laughs> all these many challenges that Elon and I faced for 20 years looking for teachers and modalities that actually repaired these things. And I could tell you it all comes down to 
your nervous system, your somatic systems getting these signals that you have been looking for since you were a little girl or a little boy. You try to get it from your spouses. You try to get it from your friends. You try to get it from your caregivers and your parents. And I want you to notice it doesn't work that way. You keep trying to do that. They don't have, if they don't have this kind of training, the capacity to do that. They don't know how to attune to a system yet. Not because they're incapable of doing that. They just, like all of us, have not been trained to do that yet. And so we have created this community of people who are doing this work to allow you guys to step into this community and immediately have people who are trained to sit with you and the ability to give you these kind of resonance feedbacks for your nervous system in order to significantly accelerate your healing and transformative process. And that is why you want to talk to someone from our team so they can kind of outline this to you. Please go watch the testimonials from people who do this kind of work. And we're telling you right now, if you do this work, it works for everybody. No exception. This is not one of those things that works for some and doesn't work for others because these are universal principles of human development that we're talking about here. This is how mammals are set up to develop. This is how mammals heal themselves when there's disrepair and dysregulation in the systems. And so again, if you learn this, your, your confidence in your ability to be with different circumstances that arise in your life goes through the roof. And, and the circumstances start stop mattering so much because you realize that it's really all about how I feel inside. All this crap that people buy, all these books that people read, all these courses that people take. At the end of the day, they think it's like, oh, I got to change my circumstances. Someone teach me how to do that. You can if you want to, but it's it, that's just a Band-Aid on what's going on inside. Yeah, you can make a lot of money and for a moment feel safe, but then you're going to have all this money and realize still don't feel safe. You can buy that thing and for a moment feel good, but then realize I still don't feel well inside. I still don't feel worthy inside because that you cannot engin engineer your inner state from circumstances outside of yourself. It doesn't work that way. The inner view, the inner healing, the, the solace within is how you transform your life. Okay. So I'll leave it at that. And again, you do all that and I promise you will take back control of your mind you will find a quieter mind, but it won't be because you focused on quieting your mind or managing your mind better, which doesn't work. It'll simply be a byproduct of this inner inner state that you begin to experience from a higher state of consciousness. And the more repetitions you do, the easier it gets, uh, the more fun it gets, the, the you're just going to get more and more from it. You know, with like mindset work, it's like, whoa, like I'm learning so much. Things are changing very rapidly. And then it's kind of like, okay, like I've, I've learned it. I understand how it all works. But it's like, there's not, not much more you can learn beyond that. And so it has this kind of diminishing returns. With the work that I'm telling you guys right now, like after five, six, seven years of doing mindset work, I was like, okay, I kind of have it. Every book sounds the same. With this work, it is parabolic. It just keeps getting better and better. All, all I keep experiencing in my life is more well-being, more authentic connection, more safety in my system, uh, easier to deal with every circumstance as it arises. I see a lot of my old habits and patterns falling away. And when they don't, they're here and they show up again. I'm like, there's a lot of compassion for them because I'm excited about the opportunity to sit again with that next layer in my system instead of going, oh my God, woe is me. Why is this happening again? Which is how it used to be. And then all the management systems and energy and effort to try to stop that from happening is honestly fucking exhausting. So we're, we're paving here a new path by bringing in what neuroscience and, and the latest in psychology is training us. And we're bringing the repair work from the ancient wisdom practices and energetic and awareness schools that Elon and I have been thankfully privileged to be part of and honored to be part of and recognizing everything is kind of pointing in the same direction, but nobody's quite put it together in a way yet that fundamentally helps people have practices and philosophies that are so simple that if you just bring these into your life, you're going to start seeing a massive, massive transformative effect. Okay. And that's really what's available here for you guys. So um, again, if you do want to get information, you can go to soulsandseekers.com forward slash, I, I still don't know if I'm saying it right, forward slash messenger. I don't know why it sounds so funny. And talk to our team. Uh, there's going to be a little chat bot there that asks you a few questions. Uh, just get through those questions. They're very simple. We're going to send you a link and explain to you how the programs work. Uh, how they're created, uh, why fundamentally we do it that way, and then what the effects of each level of the programs are. And there's an arc to it. There's a certain way that we built it. 
And so get that information. And if you have a, if you have any questions, you can then talk to a real person. So every one of those conversations is assigned to a real person um, on our team, a consultant that you can speak to. And every consultant that we have that works with us internally has been doing this work for years. So they're not just, you know, hucking a product. These are products of this work. That's why they're in this company. And there's nobody that works inside of our organization that is not doing this work right now all the time intensely. So these are the people you want to talk to. If you want to speak to somebody who's been in programs, who's currently in a program, and you want to get the firsthand experience, there's plenty of people uh, that have volunteered their time to do that. You can go watch testimonial videos. Like, you know, we have the works. We've been doing this for a long time. We know it works and we have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these testimonials for you guys to uh, check it out for. Um, Somebody is just asking about how long is the training for? Our level one training is uh, slotted for seven weeks. Uh, one of the incredible guarantees and something we changed recently is once you buy, once you enroll into level one, you can come to weekly live group coaching forever, unlimited. We used to limit it to seven weeks. We took the cap off. We say, hey, look, we want you guys to have this technology and we want you guys to have the peace of mind and not to come into a state of pressurization where, oh my God, I got to transform everything in seven weeks or I didn't get the value from this. We want you to be like, hey, look, you can come to these, these courses in perpetuity keep the training, rediscover it as often as you want. Because of course, as you learn, there's going to be nuanced things you didn't hear the first time through. And, and so that's how the first program is slotted. Uh, level two is uh, just under four months uh, program that's training directly with Elon and myself to set a new foundation in your awareness and healing practices. And then if you you know come with us all the way to level three, it's a full year of working with us um, as well. And I won't go into all the details, but that's kind of how it's all broken down. So Go check it out, see if it's for you. Um, and then we're always here. If you have any questions, drop them into the group, ask our support team. We make it really, really easy for you guys to uh, get in here. And we have all sorts of ways to put you guys into programs, even if you're uh, financially struggling right now. So um, again, just have a conversation, see if it's for you. Thank you for your time and attention today. Love you all. I'll see you next week. Peace out. Love to you and your families, guys.